I think it's, it, it's kind of a disease I have. Everybody thinks I'm thinking something dirty all the time. <laughs> Show business. Uh, so I went there and, and I, I just auditioned. I, I, I went to places and I auditioned for stuff and I got the job with Betty White after I think my third or fourth audition here. And, uh, and Betty's still my friend. She's still on the show. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's a very nice person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she is. <laughs> I don't know, I always think there, there's like an ulterior... Uh, yeah, I think it's, it, it's kind of a disease I have. Everybody thinks I'm thinking something dirty all the time. <laughs> I kind of am, but... <laughs> But well, it, it, it shows more, I think. I think that's what it is. And I think it's acceptable with Benny White. We're all thinking... Benny is <laughs> like, <Betty's laughs> definitely thinking something dirty all of the time. <laughs> well, the, the, the big break was Drew Carey's show. That, that sort of uh, was the one that put you in millions and millions of American households. I yeah, think. yeah, it was. I'm very grateful for that. That came about actually through my Canadian friend, John, uh, who stayed with me when I was... Uh, you remember this? When I was that audition? I'd been asked to go and audition for the part of the Hispanic photographer, um, <laughs> a pilot that Brooke Shields was making called uh, Suddenly Susan, which became a show, which had a Hispanic photographer in it. And uh, they gave me the, uh, the, the, the sides to go to the interview, and John was staying inside, and I said, look, this, I can't go and audition to be a Hispanic photographer. And he said, what the fuck else are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I, I went and uh, the, I did my uh, interview and you know my audition in my uh, Latino accent and the uh, and they laughed um, but afterwards said you know that was hilarious but it's not really what we're looking for <laughs> Speedy Gonzalez versus Braveheart so, uh, so um, but the, the the casting director there uh, was a guy called Tony Sepulveda and he. Um, he cast, cast all the different Warner Brothers shows. And he said, he said, that, that was, uh, can you do it? We're looking for someone for the Drew Carey show. Can you do an English accent? And I said, see, sí, yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we laughed. And, uh, and then I, I didn't audition for the show. I, I met Bruce Helford, who is the, uh, who is the show, the, the co-creator of the show with Drew. And, and Bruce is a very strange uh, little man. He's a lovely man, Bruce. He's very weird. He looks like a hobbit. And uh, he, he said, well, come and do a short tour and see, see how it works. <laughs> and, uh, and I... I that is how we talk. That is. He's yeah. yeah. like, uh, He's adorable. He stores food in his pouches. <laughs> And, um, Just with the little soul patch. Yeah, with the little soul patch as well. He's very, very nice. Very clever man. And... Uh, he, uh, after a couple of uh, a couple of episodes, I was only meant to do a couple of episodes. He, uh, he said, "Would you like to become a cast member?" And I said, "Yes, yeah, yes, yes, I would." <laughs> and that, you were still doing the Latino action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still do it from time to time. <laughs> so, what kind of doors did that open up? So, what, what, what opportunities came out of uh, Drew Carey? Well, I think what it did is it, it gave me the, the 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 first and most essential uh, thing it did was that it paid the bills. Because I had money, and, uh, and I was really, I was flat broke. So it kind of, it, it took that kind of panic away. And then I think what happened is that I got, as any, uh, I think anyone who worked in, or who works in, in a situation comedy that's controlled by someone else, if you have any kind of uh, creative ambition for yourself, you're going to get frustrated and, and uh, restless. And I, I, of course, did. And so I started uh, reading movie scripts of, because it was on the Warner Brothers lot, I was reading movie scripts of movies they were making at the time. Uh, you know, movies like, I think, Twister and stuff like that, and, you know, it was, it was around at that era. And I thought, I don't know if I can write, uh, you know, better than this, but I, I sure as shit can't write any worse. <laughs> and so, uh, so I started, I started writing, I, I had an idea for a movie about uh, a Scottish hairdresser. And, uh, as, as most people do in their careers. <laughs> and I, uh, I started writing, with a friend of mine, I started writing a, a script called Je M'appelle Crawford, which became the big piece which Warner Brothers made. And uh, they, uh, they, they, they changed the name of the movie because they thought Americans wouldn't go and see a movie that had uh, Je M'appelle in the, in the title. Uh, they also wouldn't go and see a movie that had the big T's in the title. <laughs> but that, that came later. But, 
that, <laughs> the, uh, that movie, because the script, the script from that movie, I actually like the movie as well, but I think the script was very successful um, in the sense that it was good. And it opened up, uh, you know, I got asked to uh, work on uh, Saving Grace, I got asked to write the script of the movie Saving Grace. And, and then I, I got asked by, you know, when you write a script, in, in Hollywood it's been my experience, I'm sure some of you have had this, that uh, when you write a, a it doesn't have to be produced, it just has to be a script that, that people think has got some kind of merit, you get more work. So I got work as a script writer mostly. I was doing, you know, I was firing people on the Drew Carey show for about half an hour a week, and that was paying the bills. <laughs> and the rest of the time I was writing. Uh, and I got a, a three picture deal at, at Paramount, um, and I wrote three pictures for them, none of which they made, but I think that's fine. Um, and it kind of, it opened, it, it allowed me to become, I suppose, part of the community. 